Uh, good morning once again. If you're just joining us, you are on time for the first interview of the day. And we're talking about matters health. And this particular one addresses heart diseases. We want to analyze heart diseases. And with us here is our cardiac clinician. He goes by the name Dr. George Ikaho. Hi, Musada. Glad to have you with us. Thank you very much Tell for us. having us. Great. Mm. Tell us who a cardiac clinician is. Okay, a cardiac clinician is someone who can diagnose heart diseases mm -hmm. and treat them, but they cannot take a patient to the specialized theater mm -hmm. because uh, some of the cardiac conditions that we deal with, they need someone to go to theater, mm -hmm. either for surgery or non-invasive uh, uh, procedures which are not that invasive. Mm, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So who does the um, surgeries? They the are called, uh, okay, they are surgeons. Mm -hmm. uh, Cardiac surgeons. Yes. And then they are interventional cardiologists. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones who will go. Maybe if you have a blocked heart mm -hmm. or blocked vessel, they will go and unblock it without having to open you up. Aha, uh -huh. yeah. all right. Yeah. So when we hear of, um, we, before we get even into things, mm -hmm. just, you know, when I was in primary, and even now, yeah. there's usually the heart-to-heart -heart walk, you know. Yes, yes, when you, yes. that, would, that was my first thing I remembered when I mm -hmm. saw so, uh, the interview. Yeah. So that was the heart-to-heart -heart walk. And um, for most cases, it's, we know we were contributing for children who have, were born with either some hole in their heart and all that. So how does that come about? Like how does a child get to be born with? Okay, like there are quite a defects? number of conditions that a child can be born with. Mm -hmm. But the one that most people know about is the hole in the heart. Yeah. And mostly... Uh, when the baby is developing inside the mother's womb, uh, the way our heart is as an adult mm -hmm. is not the way the baby uh, heart is. is uh -huh. So they bypass some processes. So they get blood from their mother. So wow. they bypass some processes. Mm. So once a baby is born, that first cry help them to close some of those holes. Really? Yes. Okay, that's why so, it's necessary for the baby to cry. Yeah. So it's very important. And uh, so, yeah. Okay. So when a baby does not cry, is it an indicator that they may ha have a heart problem? Or it could be. Or it could not be. Or it's not necessarily yeah. Yeah. tagged together, pinned together. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now tell us what are the different heart uh, diseases that are there? There are quite a number. So we can start with babies mm -hmm. or what we call congenital or something that you are born with. Okay. So like holes in the heart or some of the areas in the heart do not develop properly. Mm -hmm. And then there are something that you can acquire as an adult. You can start with valvular diseases. You can get... Uh, heart attacks, mm -hmm. you can get what we call heart failure. So there are quite a number. And that's why we are encouraging people nowadays, mm -hmm. at least you come and get a checkup because it's very important. We need to know how is the structure of your heart? How are you doing? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you could be having a condition, but you don't, don't realize. That yeah. you have it. Yeah. So it's important to have a checkup mm -hmm. and then we can be able to advise more. But there are quite a number of heart diseases. All right. A big range of them. There are pretty many. Yeah. Uh, but we know of a few, yes, there are few common ones like, you know, the, the hold of the heart for children yeah. and then the heart attacks yeah. and we associate it with uh, old age mm -hmm. also. But uh, can, they, can a youthful person get a heart attack? Yes, they are getting they are getting a heart yes. attack. Because of our lifestyle. It has changed. Yes. So we are seeing younger and younger people getting heart diseases. Mm -hmm. So heart attack is basically 
a blockage in the blood supply to your heart. Okay. Because the heart itself, yes, it's supposed to pump blood, blood. to the rest of the body, but mm. it also requires blood. To come so, in. yeah. So, there, if you get a blockage to supply, then that place that is supplied by that blood vessel uh, dies off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, if it's a big part of the heart, that's when someone just goes to their Lord. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And you can tell us all the indicators of mm -hmm. a heart attack mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. heart diseases. Yeah. You know, uh, sometimes we usually say uh, the 844 system was not really um, as valuable. But when you look at the heart, because it is one of the topics that we, we learned, the yeah. pulmonary vein, the pulmonary artery, how okay. blood supplies goes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So at least we have some little knowledge on that. Very true. Now, um, what causes this heart diseases and just before you get to that is um hypertension also associated with heart issues actually in our setup hypertension is the biggest cause of heart diseases okay so tell us about it as you tell us the other so causes hypertension is when your blood pressure is high and this blood pressure Mm -hmm. We are talking about the blood pressure inside your blood vessels. So you know we have blood vessels everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's not supposed to be more than 140 over 90. Actually, nowadays we are going lower, 130 oh. over 80. Why did we change it? <laughs> are we not the same people? <laughs> because that was there um, some studies have shown mm -hmm. that it's a continuum. Mm -hmm. It's something that doesn't just happen. It mm. starts early. Okay. Yeah. So, and it continues becoming an issue. Mm -hmm. And then, the problem with high blood pressure and even diabetes is that uh, these are conditions that affect your blood vessels. So, what will happen to you? Most of the people that you will see in a hospital or walking out there with a stroke, if you ask them, they, they either, either tell you, yeah. Hypertension or diabetes? Yes. All right. uh, guys who are old or advanced age and they have lost their eyesight, if you ask them. Diabetes. Yes. Guys who have a heart disease, if you ask them, hypertension, diabetes. Oh, wow. Guys who have kidney diseases, even they require yeah, dialysis. dialysis. Uh, hypertension, diabetes, mm -hmm. guys who have lost their limbs, mm -hmm. uh, diabetes. hypertension, diabetes. So these conditions, the, the thing that I have observed is that most patients don't take their medication because these conditions are not painful. So you'll mm -hmm. find a 60, 70 year old come into my clinic because of arthritis. Mm -hmm. But they are diabetic, they are hypertensive. But they are not taking care of their hypertension or their diabetes because they are not symptomatic. Uh -huh. And a lot of people don't understand that these conditions are treated not because we want, because they can go away. It's because we are treating them to avoid Bigger those issues. Yes, complications. Uh -huh. So you are not treating them to go away. It's not like you are no more flu mm -hmm. or you are whatever, but malaria. You need some few... Yeah, you know, a few syrup. days of medication. Yeah. So, um, patient education and every time a patient comes to an office, mm -hmm. they are supposed to be talked to about that issue. Mm -hmm. In fact, yesterday, <laughs> Mm -hmm. My sister called me. Yeah. She was telling me, oh, mom has like, Suji, how many drugs? <laughs> Is she going to be on them? I was like, mm -hmm. yeah. She loves you. Yeah, she has to. Uh. That's my own mother. That's my own sister. Mm -hmm. So these are things that people experience, and it's important that they understand that uh, we are treating them mm -hmm. so that they don't get complications. I don't want okay. to get my mother i don't want to see my mother having a stroke yeah yeah okay or a and heart condition and it's actually very true because uh 
the few people that I've known to have had stroke, yeah. they usually have a condition of hypertension mm -hmm. and uh, either or diabetes, you know, as just as you've mentioned rightfully. So how, how is this um, preventable? How do you, as a young person, because you, you've said that now it's affecting the young people because of the lifestyle and even these two diseases, major yeah. diseases, yeah. Uh, lifestyle diseases, hypertension yeah, and diabetes. Yeah, so how does a young person like me avoid getting to this place? Um, your food mm -hmm. and your exercise re regime. Yeah. Okay. So actually food nowadays we are insisting on uh, carbs because we are eating a lot of carbohydrates. Interesting. Is it is it because it's our culture, Kenya? Because we love too I much ugali. So. We love. <laughs> I think so because if you know, if I go and visit someone, uh, <laughs> my plate will be you know three quarters will be ugali Cubs. or mm -hmm. yeah, or rice or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's supposed to be the opposite. So mm -hmm. we should insist more on vegetables and more of proteins and less of carbohydrates okay yeah so and then we should exercise according to world health organization mm -hmm. exercise is defined as moderate intense exercise so that is something that makes your heart beat faster and you feel warm warmth in your body or you sweat yeah if you sweat is even better and then it should be 150 minutes a week. So that 150 minutes yeah. a week. So we are talking about 30 minutes a day. That's uh, what type of exercise? Is walking enough exercise? Walking, as in, okay. Just you know, sometimes when you insist on a certain kind of activity or exercise, uh, people tend to uh, not do it. Mm -hmm. So we encourage people to just work. Uh -huh. Walk. Okay, walk. Wacha na nduzi. Tembea. Wacha na uba. You know, we used to, kitambo, those things were not there. You know, you don't have to uba, you don't have to use your car, you don't have to, for those who use uh, motorbikes, they mm -hmm. don't have to use it. Try and avoid that as in any exercise is good for you. Okay. But if you can be able to do something formal, like, uh, you know, walking 30 minutes a day. You're good enough. You're good enough. You're good to yeah. go. So that's, that is the, li the least that we can do to avoid uh, getting hypertension, True. to avoid getting diabetes, because diabetes is carbs, sugar, and, mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone already has this, particular condition or in some cases they have both hypertension and diabetes mm -hmm. now these are the leading causes of heart attack especially hypertension now what do they do um, in order to not get to that place actually that's a very good question because um, like diabetes nowadays we are able to reverse it how so by avoiding carbs, taking 120 grams of carbohydrates a day. Oh, wow. But uh, that's a very difficult thing to do for anybody. For most people, yes. especially so, a Kenyan. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, if you can be able to do it, do it. Mm. They are reversible. Okay. I have friends who we managed for high blood pressure because their lifestyle was a bit uh, different mm -hmm. from what should be done and they have been able to reverse it because they are still young. Mm -hmm. um, I know people who are young who have been able to reverse their diabetes but it requires a lot of discipline and that's the most important thing, discipline. If you are not able to be disciplined then uh, <laughs> so it's w either this or that. It's either, either this or that. You either uh, get comfortable with the 
with the idea of taking medication for the whole life or you can avoid carbs your whole life and you know reverse diabetes not avoid carbs they are important because they Just. they provide energy to our body but the problem or the thing that we do is that we overdo it mm. yeah okay. so if we are able to reduce like i've told you there are guys who have been put on such diet that they are only using 120 grams of carbs a day yes wow that's quite intense two slices of bread i think is about 30 <laughs> so you can start doing your calculations <laughs> that's good enough for someone who you know for many people who want even to to uh cut their weight it's usually mm -hmm. the carbs that they yeah. have to avoid so if people are able to do it let them do it mm -hmm. but if you are not able to do it take your medication make sure you take your medication yeah, because you are taking them too uh, so that you don't get those complications we talked about. All right. Yeah. Is it the same for hypertension? Are there things that you need to avoid also? Mm -hmm. It's the what? same. It's the same. The same exact thing. So yeah. it's the food and also the medication. The medication and the exercise. Okay. Now, what are the indicators that you ha you'd, you're you going to have a heart issue? Let's say a heart uh, attack because... Okay. For, from what I know, is that before you get a heart attack, there's usually signs way mm -hmm. before time. Mm -hmm. So what are those things that you should look out so for? So most guys <coughs> will, um, when they are sleeping at night, uh, they, can't they can't lie <coughs> on a flat space. Mm -hmm. They will need um, um, pillows, a lot of them. Some will wake up at night mm -hmm. uh, because they don't have air. They feel like they, they need air. They're running out of breath. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then uh, when you are walking, you can't walk far. You need to sit down and catch your breath. Wow. Uh, some will have their feet swollen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... This is and coughing a mm -hmm. lot some will have their abdomen swollen yeah those so are some of the indicators yeah so those are some of the symptoms that uh, you will be able to get mm -hmm. yeah and they're always associated to other um chronic illnesses because you have mentioned uh, the issue to do with the swelling mm -hmm. and the feet yeah. that's also associated to people who have kidney failure right yeah, true. um you have also mentioned running out of breath mm -hmm. you know even people with kidney failure have that and i've seen people with kidney failure also having problems mm -hmm. with the heart mm -hmm. at some point mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so how does someone in that position now manage all this you know you have a chronic illness and your heart is also causing issues because mm -hmm. uh for one of, i i i knew of a, of a person who had uh kidney failure and had issues with her heart so at night you know you should literally hear her heart beating from mm -hmm. her ear mm -hmm. it is so fast you can't sleep mm -hmm. and what you've just said they can't really lie straight on the bed they have to be at a raised position yeah, so that they can true try cut sleep because yeah. it's hard so how does someone in that state handle it so that's where we come in and mm -hmm. give you medication because what happens at that moment is that you are retaining fluid so you are retaining water and that's why you have those kind of symptoms that's why your feet are swelling that's why you are coughing so much that's why you can't lie flat and that's why you need to catch your breath. So you'll have to go to a hospital. They will give you medication uh, to, to remove the fluid. Mm -hmm. And then after that, the beauty about heart, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe that's why I am passionate about it, mm -hmm. is that uh, a lot of studies have been done, and we have very good medication. For those guys who really uh, allow us to manage them, they really get better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So someone okay. will not be able to walk from here to there, but they within have. two, three months, they are able to do everything. Mm -hmm. They can even go to a shamba. So what, what they do, they stop taking their medication. Unfortunately, a minimum of, if someone has like heart failure, we have a minimum of four drugs. Wow. So and they're usually expensive drugs, just for uh, yeah. the record. Yeah. Wow. But uh, the prices are coming down. Mm -hmm. What is yeah. being done, you know, towards that? How are patients? Because you 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 find that there are patients uh, who are not privileged, you know, and the for the cover. P mm -hmm. Not everyone is also privileged to get the private insurance covers. And yeah. uh, previously, when you had NHIF, it can't cover, it doesn't cover for medication. But then you get patients who have heart diseases and they're coming from rural areas, they're not able to buy. And you get that people die not because they c there's no treatment mm -hmm. to it, but because they can't really afford this medication. It's draining. Mm -hmm. So, what yeah, is it being is, done? It is, but. Um, the first medication that was shown to help someone who has a heart disease, especially heart failure, was in 1987. So, so there are medications which can be used. So we say mm -hmm. it's better someone to be on some medication, even if it's not what is being recommended right now, mm -hmm. but be on medication that they can afford. All right. So I mm. know, yeah, there are people who are not privileged. Um, and most of the condition that require a lot of medication can be preventable. So we can start from prevention. Okay. So let's start from there. Mm. If you are already sick, I don't think there is uh, there are medication that, you know, Okay, they, I know when you tell someone 500 per month, some guys, it's, it's not a, a big deal. Yeah. Um, but for those who can afford, it goes up to six, seven, eight thousand per month. Mm -hmm. But we can do and we can do 500. Yeah. Yeah. We can do a K. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. um, the interventions in at least trying to reduce the yeah. the cost of this mm -hmm. uh, medication. Yeah, they are there. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there's something that I've always wondered if it's related to the heart. Mm -hmm. You would hear that someone was just sleeping and then they died. Mm -hmm. And may, for many people, they, uh, it's usually said they had a heart attack. Yeah. I don't know if that's the the easiest conclusion that <laughs> yeah, you sh is usually made uh, because someone is healthy. Like mm -hmm. there's a story I think I had on radio or is it, you know, someone came from Nairobi and they just decided they wanted to go home for the weekend. Yeah. Or I th maybe I had it from someone mm -hmm. and th they wanted to go home for the weekend just to relax and they were fine and they went home and on that particular day just when they arrived uh, during the night he died and the morning they found him and they said he died of a heart attack so tell, tell me about that <laughs> all right um as i said the uh, heart attack happens when there is no blood supply to the heart muscle mm -hmm. so it is possible depending on someone. Mm -hmm. um, it is possible that they could have had a blockage in their heart vessel mm -hmm. that was supplying a big part of the heart. So if you get a blockage in the blood vessel that supplies a big part of your heart, mm -hmm. it means that your heart muscle dies off. So it's not able to pump blood. So, and that's how it occurs. So it is possible, but it could be something else. Okay. Yeah. So it's a possibility, but it's not all the cases that it's not all heart the attack. cases, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You have talked about heart failure. Yeah. Now, heart, when you say heart failure, it means the heart is not functioning. It's failed, right? Because 
me, and you'll correct me, because mm -hmm. when people would say kidney failure, it's usually the chronic kidney failure th where mm -hmm. both kidneys have stopped function and mm -hmm. they're completely reliant on dialysis mm -hmm. until they get mm -hmm. a transplant. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you say heart failure, mm -hmm. you, we don't have another extra heart. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Okay. Um, every time the heart pumps, it's supposed to pump between 60 and 100 times a minute. Mm -hmm. So every time it pumps, it pumps about 55 to 70 percent of the blood that is in it, mm -hmm. or the left chamber. So heart failure occurs when it is pumping less than 55 percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So there is a test that we do. It's an ultrasound test. Uh, I think most people might be familiar with ultrasound. Yeah. Um, it's that test that they check the baby, how is it, it, it is baby doing, kicking, yes, yeah, yes. and all that. Mm -hmm. So we are able to use the same machine to check the heart, and when we check it, we are able to to know how much blood is being pumped. Mm -hmm. So it's if it's below um, fifty five percent then you categorize that as heart failure. But again, um, in older population, especially those people who have high blood pressure, they are tending to, they are able to pump blood, but not able to receive blood. The, okay. So they pump the, out, the heart pumps out its blood, it's, yeah, but normal. the blood coming in is a it's, problem. It's, yeah, it's a little, it's not uh, like, um, the normal amount of blood that Required. should get yeah, mm -hmm. into the heart. So that is also another part of heart failure. All right. So there is heart failure with reduced ejection fraction and heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you have th this heart failure, you don't die immediately? No, no. Okay. But yeah. when you have a heart... Okay, so when you have a heart failure, you don't die immediately. There's an intervention and that's through medication, yeah. right? Yeah. When you have a heart attack, uh, what is the intervention? For okay. Because some people die of heart attack, some people survive heart attack. What so intervention is almost the same because uh, the heart will fail. You know, if that part of the heart um, dies off. But we say time is muscle. Time if is muscle? Yes. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? <laughs> the earlier you go to hospital, the higher the chances of saving your heart muscle. So we encourage, and that's why I, I, I talked about interventional cardiologists. So they will come in. If they are able to come in within 24 hours, mm. they are, uh, there are some intervention. You don't, there is a special theater mm -hmm. that someone is taken to, and the part that is blocked or the vessel that is blocked is opened up. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, and uh, at least nowadays, I, uh, actually even this morning I was checking my social media and places like Nakuru are offering that. Mm -hmm. Kitambo used to be only in Nairobi and Mombasa, uh -huh. but you can get those uh, interventional uh, procedures even in Eldoret, Kisumu, Nakuru. Mm -hmm. So it is possible. So it is important for a patient to know that they are getting a heart attack. And mostly they feel pain in the chest, the middle of the chest. It can be somewhere else, but mostly it's in the middle of the chest. Mm -hmm. And the way they describe it is they say it's like an elephant sitting on my chest. Mm -hmm. yeah. Something like it's, it's so, um, yeah. pressing, pressing your heart, yeah. your chest. Yeah. So if you get that and you are able to go to a hospital that offers those procedures, it is very possible for that muscle or that blockage to be opened up. Right. Yeah, okay. so there is a lot of hope. That's okay. why I say the in heart cardiology, in heart uh, medicine, uh, there are a lot of things that can be done. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, just as we close on this, mm -hmm.
because uh, we're learning, you know, it might not happen to us, but it might happen to someone else. Now, when someone is having a heart attack uh, and you're there, how do you know this person is having a heart attack and what is the first aid measure you can do immediately after you call for an ambulance? Okay, that's a very good question. Um, if they come into a place like ours, there's a test that we call an ECG. Mm -hmm. So when you do an ECG, it's able to show you that this someone is having a heart attack. And there are some interventions that can be done. There are some medications that are given. And yeah, and then you call in an ambulance. Uh, because mm -hmm. I work in Embu, uh, within two hours they will be in Nairobi and they will okay. be intervented. All right. But yeah. now for a someone, just, you know, a family member, what do you do immediately at that, in that, at that state? At that state, Before you, take you them in. to Horsi. There's nothing you can do. You, you can no give them aspirin. You can... Aspirin, aspirin. helps. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it does help. And uh, another drug called clopidogrel and another one that lowers cholesterol. Ah. Yeah. So if you are able to do it, but if you are not, rush them to hospital. To hospital. Yeah. And cholesterol is a big factor when we talk mm -hmm. about hypertension mm -hmm. and the heart because that's yeah. what clogs the veins. Yeah, and, and very all. true. Very so true. As a bare minimum, we can be testing our cholesterol level because we take too much fat. You know, fatty foods. The fast foods, there's a lot that young people take. They are very true. Now, <laughs> as we close on this, uh, mm -hmm. Daktari, mm -hmm. and we hope to have you again to continue this conversation, what, what would be your advice to those that are watching in terms of taking care of their, their health, especially matters to do with the heart? This is your camera, and you can also give us your social media handles where people can get you. Okay. So, my first advice will be let's exercise and let's eat the right food uh, and be happy oh yeah <laughs> very important <laughs> um one of my teachers mm, used to say uh, you should avoid unhappy and unlucky people wow yeah. I think I love that. <laughs> <laughs> it solves half of your problems. <laughs> it does, by the way. <laughs> and because we are also seeing a lot of people with stress, let's talk. Let's uh, talk to each other mm -hmm. because it's very important. The world that we are living in, the world of social media, uh, it's a world of um, uh, challenges every day. Mm -hmm. So don't feel like you are alone and don't take that thing. So, you know, usichukulie mambo kwa roho. Like the way they say siyasa unayeka kwa lungs. Like vitu zingine pia, don't really, because honestly, that is one of our major issues. Most of our patients, we have to talk to them about uh, stress. Mm -hmm. And we have to ask them about it. Wow. And uh, I think 50% of our patients, we do give them antidepressants. Wow. So it is something that is there. Mm -hmm. So it is important for us to talk to each other and, you know, have a moment. Yeah, we're going through the same things. It's yeah. interesting. We, we share the same problems. The only difference is our our action towards them, how we, our yeah. perception and how we yeah. act towards yeah. them. Okay. And for those who are hypertensive, who are diabetic, who have heart issues, just take heart, know that uh, heart medicine is very advanced and the medication that we give you, even if it's a lot, please take them. You will feel better. Please don't stop taking the medication. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you very much for those final words. I am, I've taken so. a lot <laughs> from <laughs> it, but I love that you need to be around happy people and avoid mm. unlucky, unlucky people. I don't know who are the unlucky, unlucky people. Unlucky and unhappy people. Unhappy people. people. <laughs> All right. You know, I to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the I hope you can help them too. Anyway, where can people find you on your social media? Okay. Um, 
we can start with my number, 0721673529. The office number, 0715039443. I'm on Twitter as Ikahoangoro. Uh, Facebook, Ikahoangoro and George Ikahu. Uh, TikTok, the same handles, Ikahoangoro and George Ikahu. And even Instagram, Ikahoangoro and George Ikahu. Wonderful. Mm. Thank you very much. Karim uh, Sana. That is Dr. George uh, Ikahu, as he said, and he's a clean. A cardiac clinician we've been talking about caring for our heart and analyzing heart diseases you i know you have taken a lot from it i have for sure and we're going to take a short break and then we'll be back with the next interview with valentine you're going to enjoy it so stick right here